Hi there. Now for this next part, it is given that instead that one particle is at rest immediately after the collision. And we've got to state which particle is in motion after the collision and find the speed of this particle. And in the second part, we've got to find the time taken after the collision for the moving particle to return to its initial position. So if you'd like to have a go at this, just give you a moment to pause the video. When you come back, you can either fast forward or just check out my work solution. OK, welcome back then if you had a go. So which particle is going to be moving and which one's going to be at rest? Well, we can see that if we look at the momentum of P, that is taking its mass times its velocity, that's going to be 1.2. 1.2 kilogram meters per second of momentum. And this particle here, if we look, work out its momentum by times in the mass with the velocity, this is going to be 0.2 times 5, which is 1 kilogram meter per second. Now, this one wins, if you like. It's got more momentum than this particle here. So that means that after the collision, the particles would want to move to the right. But we're told one stops, so it has to be P that stops, and Q will reverse direction and move off towards the right. So I'm going to mark that in, that that one's going to be 0 meters per second. P comes to rest, and then Q moves off with let's say, a speed of v meters per second. So state which particle is in motion after the collision. So it's got to be that q moves, OK? q moves. Now, for the next part, we've got to find the speed then, v. And what I'm going to do is use the conservation of linear momentum, taking to the right as positive. I'm taking right as positive purely because v is in the positive sense. So by the conservation of linear momentum, then we have got the momentum before impact equals the momentum after impact. So that means that if we look at the momentum before impact for p, we've got its mass, 0.3, multiplied by its velocity, which is Four in the positive sense. And to this we add the momentum of Q, which is its mass, 0.2, and we multiply that with its velocity. Now its speed is 5 meters per second, but it's going to the left in the opposite sense to my positive sense, so it's going to be minus 5. And this is going to be equal to the momentum of P after impact, well, because it's got no velocity, its momentum will be zero. So all we've got then is the momentum of Q, which is its mass, 0.2, multiplied by the velocity, V, which is in the positive sense. So just a question of simplifying this and seeing what we get. 0.3 times 4 is 1.2 minus 0.2 times 5, that's minus 1, that leaves me with 0 0.2. 0 0.2 equals 0.2v. And if I now divide both sides by 0.2, v is going to equal 1. So find the speed of the particle. I'm just going to just say, therefore, speed of q. Speed of q equals 1 meter per second. All right? Now for part B, we've got to find the time taken after the collision for the moving particle to return to its initial position. So we'll just rule this off here. And for part B, I feel that we're going to need to draw a simple diagram. We'll take our smooth horizontal surface, something like this, OK? We've got our two particles, P and Q, which are initially 3.6 meters apart. So just mark that in as so. And we'll mark in their initial speeds. P was moving at 4 meters per second, and Q was moving at 5 meters per second. 
We'll mark those particles in as P and Q. Now, they're going to collide. Let's say they collide at that point there. And at that point there, Q turns and goes in the opposite direction as it bangs into P, which is at rest. I'll just mark in Q there. It moves back in this direction at one meter per second. Now I'm going to need to work out a couple of equations that I can relate to this 3.6 meters. I'm going to need to work out these two distances traveled by P and Q. We'll call the distance traveled by P before the collision here SP and the distance Q travels to the point of collision SQ. Now they both take T seconds to get to this point here where they collide. So I want to try and work out what T is. So I'm going to consider P, particle P. Let's just put this down here, consider P. And if I consider P, I know that that distance SP is going to be equal to its speed times the time T. So that's going to be 4T. If I do much the same for Q, we'll consider Q, then what I've got is SQ equals the speed, which is 5, times the same time T. But I know that SP plus SQ gives me that total distance there of 3.6 meters. And from this, I can work out what T is. So we'll just come down here. If I take my two equations and substitute them into this equation, let's just number them 1, 2, and we'll call that one 3. And we say sub 1 and 2 into 3. Then what we get is 4t plus 5t a total of 90, so therefore 90 equals 3.6. So if I divide both sides by 9, t ends up as 0 0.4. 0 0.4 seconds then. So now I can work out what that distance sq is. So if I substitute this value back into equation two, then I've got that therefore SQ must be equal to five times 0 0.4. Five times 0 0.4 gives me two. So I know that we've got our distance here of two meters. Knowing that that's two meters across there, I can find now the time it takes to return back because it's going at one meter per second. So therefore the time taken okay taken to return to Q must be equal to the distance which is two divided by the speed which was one. So it's going to take two seconds. Okay?